Hey, hey. Okay, let me share myself out from here. <laughs> Hello, guys. Welcome to my YouTube channel. I have to make an intro in the case of those who, <laughs> who will come across this video. Not here on live stream. What do you guys think about my hair first? <laughs> so the tutorial is coming up on Tuesday. I'm going to post that on Tuesday. So guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Christiana Akuru and I make wigs. <laughs> and usually this is a wig class that I make every Sunday. It's not going to be like every Sunday forever. It's going to last for seven weeks straight. And after the seven weeks, I'm going to take down all of the videos that has to do with the wig class. So if you're coming across my channel for the first time please do subscribe click on the notification bell so that whenever i post videos you'll be one of the first people to be notified so quickly already if you're one of my krista and you've been attending my class this is our second class and we're going to be talking about something else today or we're going to be doing something else today hi i just noticed someone joined me if you're just joining me for the first time usually in this class i don't go ahead to hail hail everyone let me take my camera down a little bit I don't go ahead to hello or hail everyone who come in. I just uh, let the moderators or the people I have here do their thing. But quickly, I'm just going to share a video from WhatsApp here or from to my groups or something like that, my friends on my tab everywhere I can. So people would know I'm live. Okay. So if you're just joining me, just be a little bit patient with me. Let me just quickly do that i don't know who just joined me because i haven't seen any comment i don't know if i have to tap on the comment first to get the name so if you're just joining me you're welcome okay no comments yet you're welcome so today we're going to be doing before i share my video out let me just tell you what we're going to be doing today we're going to be doing the the measurements we are last week we did a lot if you if you would like to know what we did last week you can go and check out the video it's there on my still on my channel about what we did last week we talked about the size of head the types of cap to use and uh basically almost everything we talked about so today is yet another class and we're going to be doing more things here today but before then i just want to share the video go i don't know okay uh let me see okay 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 if you're just joining me thank you for the like i'm grateful i see someone just give me a thumbs up thank you for the thumbs up i'm trying to share the video i'll be with you soon okay Hi, Simply Jersey. Thank you for joining me. Good evening and happy Sunday to you. How are you? How is your family? I enjoyed your daughter's birthday vlog. <laughs> it was just like I was there. I don't see party go for here now. No, I got to party yesterday. But it felt like you were here. What have I done? Oh, I don't know what I've done. The, the link I was trying to share, I think I messed up. Do, 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 do. Guys, so please join me. Join me. Okay. Well, wow, thank you. Everyone is blessed. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm happy they are fine. I just, I didn't go to church today. I wanted to go to church. As you can see, I have no single makeup on. I don't know. Today, I just feel like not applying anything. I think 
even if I've taken my bath, this is the lipstick from yesterday and it wouldn't go away. Okay, so I've shared the video and now I'm just going to start <laughs> with the people with me here. So the thing is, I don't know as much people as it's going to come at the end of the day later, but I'm just going to start with those of you who are here. So we're just going to continue. You might not be seeing my face as we go ahead, or maybe I'll just uh, say some things that needed to be said, and then I'll just continue the class. So first of all, last week I talked about how to get the right measurement of your head, how to get the right measurement. Your face is fine. Thank you. Hope you and your family are fine too. We are doing wonderfully well by the grace of God. So last week I talked about how to get the measurement of your circumference, how to get the right measurement and the sizes of caps to use for each head. The sizes of, of caps to use for each measurement. So I talked about that last week. I also talked about the sizes of uh, your dormy heads and maniki. I talked about all of that last week. So today I'm going to be telling you the names, the names of those different types of measurement that we did last week. So if you haven't watched my video from last week, this is one of the reasons why after this video, you want to go and watch the live last week so you would know where we stopped. So today, basically, I'm going to be talking about the sizes of the, the names of the measurement that we did. Someone just joined me. Fix Africa, Africa, greeting from Shaoxin. Hmm. I don't know, but I think that, that sounds like the first time or second time I'm hearing that name. Thank you so much for joining me. God bless you. Uh, so I'm in my week class today and I wouldn't be helloing everyone who comes in for the privilege of those who are going to watch this video after this class. So uh, Simply Josie, are you going to be here for long? Please, sis, if you're going to be here for long, let me add you as my moderator so that you can write a message when people come in just for me to inform them that I won't be going back and front welcoming everyone who comes in the chat. Please, can you write me yes or no or if you're busy, if you're going to be here for a while. I think my village people have not arrived. They will soon come. Your head, your head, yeah, it's really nice. Thank you so much, sis. It's super long. It's as long up to my nail. It's long up to my nail. I did it day before yesterday. I'm going to put the video up on Tuesday. So simply, Josie, would you be here for a while? If yes, even if you're not going to be here, let me... Okay, you're already my moderator. Yeah, yeah, you're already one of my moderators. So please, you can just help me write to say I would be... Welcoming everyone. So you can just help me like welcome to the class or something like that. I soon leave mama, but I want to. But I want to leave you on another account on my laptop. Okay, ma. Thank you so much for even coming. I thought it means a lot to me. So I just go ahead. So today I'm going to be telling you the names of the measurements and where are the measurements. I will be here for a while. Okay. Hi. Hi, uh, Sienna. Sienna Smoothie Sands. Okay, Sienna, I would have really loved to make you my moderator, but I, this is my first time I'm seeing you here. And, uh, you know, you know what I mean. It's the first time. So, my village people will soon come. Don't worry. Thank you so much for offering to help. Um, okay, thank you so much. So, I just go ahead. So, last week we talked about all of that. So, this week we're basically just going to be talking about the names of the places you have to make sure. If you remember, I told you around i told you last week that around the head this is just for demonstration i'm using this card for demonstration today i told you last week that around the head of the manicure manicure like this is called the circumference of the cap it's called the circumference of the cap around like this. This is the circumference of a weak cap. Why from here in front, relax and learn, please don't. Okay. So why in front of the wig like this to the back of the wig is called front to nap of the wig. From the front of the wig like this to the back of the wig is called the front and the nap of the wig. 
like I said, I said I, I, I did say some of these things last week, but I didn't make sure the name. I didn't tell you what are the names and what are the difference. So from the front of the week to the back is called the front to the nap of the week. Why from here and the front like this? So here of the week is called the ear to ear of the week. The front side like this is called the ear to ear of the week. Why? How should I put it? Um, ear to ear of the week. Why from here? This is your ear, like on top of your ear here. The first one I did the measurement is this place, your hairlines. The front of the hairlines from your ear to your ears of the headline is called the ear to ear of the week. Why on top like this, which is here, here, it's called ear to ear front head. As you can see, ear to ear front head. <laughs> I hope that makes sense. For a non wig maker, this language sounds strange. Even from, for some wig makers that I know, they have no ideas of the names of these things I'm telling you because. If you really want to make a wig, you can just start fixing your wig, choking your needle, and you make your wig, boom, and you're out. But these tests are very important. They are things you need to know so that when you start making your wigs, it's easy for you to take a measurement of a client or yourself, someone whom you want to make the wig for. It's very, very, this is a very, very important part. Thank you all, my sweet child. Okay. So this is a very, very important part. You really, 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 really needs to like know this part of measurement these are very important so the back of your cap here is called the nap of your cap of your wig this back of the wig is called the nap if you're wondering why this part of your wig is called the temple of your wig these are very important things you need to know in wig making so should the case come across this video and you're wondering from where we start from you can just go back and look at my live videos where I did uh, my week classes and then you will get all the ideas. So today there's something very important that I really want to teach you. I want to teach you guys how to take the, how to make the right, uh, how should I put it? The right place to sew, how to sew your webs, the lines, the right place to sew your web lines and the places to stitch, the right way to stitch your webs that's what i want to teach today so basically this cap is just for demonstration purpose this is not the right wig cap for you to use for wig making this cap is a cap of or underneath your wig is a cap you can wear under your wig a socks cap it's not a wig making cap but but for the reasons of um for but for just the teaching reasons i'm using this cap because it's a cap that is disposable and i can just throw it away when i'm done with it so that's the reason why I'm using this cap. Okay, so basically as Elena, what you want to do is, like I said, you have to get a tape. So I'm going to place my tape to show you so you can know the right place to actually put your cap. Some people, I see them making wigs and they pull their cap up to, they pull it up to somewhere here. Some even go as far as pulling their caps off up to half of the way so the way you can know the right place to put your cap is to take a measurement of the head of the manicure you're using i know that some manicure heads are longer than some you find some blocks that are so short some block head dull head that are so short dummy heads that are so short some are really super super short and this one is a little bit on the longer side you understand this one i'm using is a little bit on the longer side so some dummy head would measure from here to here of the head would measure six but for this one this one measure eight i'm going to show you what i mean so when you put your tape in the beginning <laughs> sorry guys so if you put your tape in the beginning like this If you put your tape in the beginning like this this is the beginning i'm putting my tape here if you measure to where i have my cap on you will get eight why for some block head you will get six 
but for mine you would get eight so if you have the longer one you need to get you need to measure eight in that way you will know the right place to start your week cap from this is a very important lesson this is super super like important guys give me a minute Okay, guys, so I'm back. I don't know why I kind of feel mm, bad in my mouth. So I needed like a gum. So like I said, um, the front of your wig has to be, you have to, if, you're, if you have a longer block head like mine, if yours has a neck like mine do, it has to be measure eight. Mm -mm. Can't speak with the gum in. Sorry for that. So you have to use a more shorter, um, you have to use measure six, but if yours, no, if it has a neck, you have to measure eight. If it doesn't have, have a neck, you have to measure six. So in demonstration, I'm going to show you the right way that you can actually sew your wig. So what you want to do, this is your tape. This is the tape I'm using. I'm using a regular tailoring tape here. Just the regular tailoring tape. You can use your Eurostore tape. My block head is too big. Okay, what is the size of your block head? What did I miss? Okay, um, you're going to... I might not be able to explain it anymore. So I gave the names of the wig, the, the, the measurements of your wigs. I gave the names that you need to know about the measurement. I measured the circumference, which is the round one. The front to the nap, which is from here to here. The ear to ear, which is here to here. The ear to ear over top, which is from here to here. Temple of the wig, which is here. This is the temple of your wig. Nap and neck. This is the nap and the neck of your wig. Okay? So that was that was the measure. That was what I talked about. That's what you miss, actually. So now I'm going to give you some uh, demonstration with a wig. So I actually have this hair here that I've saved <laughs> to use uh, for the demonstration today. Okay. So this is the hair I saved for us to use today for demonstration. So today, this is one of the most important mistakes that I see people do in wig making. That I see that I feel like they don't know it. It's the bundles, the sizes or the types of hair you need to use for your wig actually depends on the quantity of hair you need to do. It depends on the quantity of hair you have. So if you have three bundles and a closure, don't forget that it's not the same spacing you are going to give when you have four bundles. And a closure or when you have five bundles and a closure or when you have four bundles and a fronter or when you have four bundles three bundles and a fronters fronter sorry so every week depending on the quantity and the style it's what the timing the quantity or the the, the, the space you are going to give in your hair mind you in as much as this is important if you are able to get two Correctly, you would know how to control the rest of the types of the hair. The, the rest of the hair. You understand? If you are able to get two correctly, if you are able to know quantity, when I'm okay, when I'm using three bundles, this is how I'm supposed to space my hair. When I'm using four bundles, this is how I'm supposed to space my hair. When you're able to get that right, even when you have ten bundles or when you have one bundles, you will know the right way to space your head. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take our tip. Put the tape in front like this, in front of your cap. And you're going to have to pin down. You just have to pin down your cap like this. 
and then you're going to take that tape leading you backward like this to the back like i said this cap is basically only for um the tutorial reasons only now we're going to put our cap here let me just put it at 14 because usually if i'm making a real wig that's actually the number i do i always make my wig to be 14 whenever i'm making my wig i end up making it to be 14 so let's leave it to be 14 that's from the front of the head i know my, my tape is not in the in the middle but it's just for demonstration purpose only so now we're going to have to take our pencils we're going to have to take our pencils or our marker whatever thing you have if you're a beginner this is a very important step that would help you in your wig making because this will enable you to have a more clear step and a more neat uh how should i put it a more neat wig making your wig will be in shape it's still me josie hey thank you sister josie what happened my blockhead is too small okay vienna i'm sorry for the my phone uh my in phone with the internet went off i didn't remember to charge it so when it went off i quickly have to charge it and reconnect um am i having a technical problems no it was i think maybe it's you maybe it's you that happened to me some some minutes ago so uh vienna can you help me invite to the group i don't know if i did i don't know if it was it went through so i put my tape at 14. so now this is the most asked question that people ask me in my classes with this account okay sister josie thank you so much people ask me let me make you a moderator with this too okay people ask me this question every day people ask me this question every blessed day it's so freaking funny they're like okay how do i know the right place to space my wig how do i know where to space my wig how am i sure i'm not spacing the wrong place i'm not speaking uh, i'm not making my wig too spacious i'm not making my wig too close so now for this technique i'm about to teach you if you are using a closure please mind you this is if you're using a closure i know that for closure we have 5s5 4s4 6x6 2x6 so on and so forth but the most common closure being used right now is 4s4 this is the most co common closure okay vienna is here this is the most common closure that people are using right now welcome vienna that people are using right now vienna please don't always forget to help me write and tell people i won't be welcoming them so we can really concentrate so today i'm just going to show you that if you are using three bundles to make a wig which is like the regular bundles that people use in making wigs and you're using a closure this is the right way to space it now this is our measurement here is 14 you have to give it one inch so 14 is here then you move ahead and space it here this is when this is when you are using three bundles and a closure and you are doubling your webs and you are actually doubling your webs please this is not when you are using a single web this is not when you are using a single web this is when you're doing the double web method the double web method and um and you're fixing you're fixing a double web web method not the single web and you're using four bundle and a closure so you should make it in one inches sorry one inches please just mind you to know that you're doubling your webs right like you are really doubling your webs then there's something i need to tell you you have to do that up to where you get to the temple of the head don't forget that i told you that this is the temple of the head because the temple of the head is the place that will be here it will be here of your head and that part of your head tends to remain more open if you notice it's always like it has more space when you're making a wig so for the temple of your head you need to make half an inch each so for the temple of your head you need to make half an inch instead of one inches this is a very important part and a very common mistake that people make in, that people make in wig making when they are making the temple of their head they give the same spacing that they give from the down they put it in the temple of their head 
So when a little breeze is blowing, you just notice the middle of the wig will just be open and the cap will be showing. So for the temple of your head, you want to make your wig to be um to be half an inch instead of one one inches. And this is when you're using just three bundle and you are actually uh how should I put it? You're actually you're actually uh doubling your webs. So I'm gonna just go to the other side and also mark it. Don't mind my lines that they are not even here. I think for the purpose of the class. And then I'll go around to show you where you need to pull these marks. So for the marks, you don't need to take them up like they are looking. So you need to bring them down. You need to bring them down. Because if you take them up as they are looking, don't forget that the part of your wig will not have enough hair. This side, these two sides of your wig will have less hair. So you don't need to take the lines up. Rather, you need to bring the lines down. Like this. Pardon my pencil. I couldn't find my the marker I use for class. So I'm just using <laughs> the most awkward eye lip liner I have. I couldn't find my uh, wig marker, cap marker. So I'm just using this. Okay. So I'm going to make the other side mark also. I'm marking the other side. So, I have the most shitty pencil today, but don't worry, we'll always make it work. So, for, because of the pencil I have, as you can see, my lines are not even, but this is just like a guideline for you. This is just like a guideline for you to understand how to place your line, your wig webs. This is like a guideline for you on how to place your wig webs. So instead of you to draw those lines going straight up like you would, you would normally do because of the way they were looking here, you need to bring them down like this. So the next step I'm going to be showing you is how to actually, the inches you need to give when you're stitching a wig. So this is where we get to use our hairs today. This hair is so soft. What was happening? I'm here. Okay, I'm here. Okay, Vienna, nothing was happening. I kept telling it, keep telling me error. Really? Is it still telling you errors? Let me check. Yes. Still alive. Um, I'm still alive. I don't know. Did you braid your hair? Yes, I did. The tutorial is coming up. It's super long. <laughs> up to my new. Um, Vienna, I'm live. And I think you can also see me. So today, guys, for this wig I'm making, this is not the right cap to use for any wig, but this is just a demonstration. This is just a demonstration. And that's the reason why I'm going to be sewing it where you can actually see it properly. I'm going to be sewing it here in one of the lines here. Now, 
please this is a very important 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 high favor uh i said i wasn't going to be high on anyone but i can't hold it so this is a very important part that you need to know when you are doubling your webs when you're using a double web of wig of of webs to make your hair this would this is a game changer for wig like this will change your wig game i'm telling you babes it's gonna change your wig games if you just try these ideas that i'm giving you so let's assume you have two webs you want to use to sew i see people placing their webs like they are twin they place their webs like this like those webs are twin like this you don't nobody place the web of a wig a web like this to sew their wigs sister <laughs> like that that should be in the 90s or in the early 2000s right now no one does that so what you need to do is to slide down <laughs> that's how i place it on no sweetie it's going to make when you feel the wig it's going to look bulky so right now this is what you need to do if you're using a double web you need to slide down one of the web a little bit before the second web which means your web has to be like this. Slide down the down webs a little bit and pull the up, up one above like this. So what does that mean? It makes sense, right? It just means that it looks like you're using one because on a normal sense, I'm going to shift this very close and stand up. On a normal sense, if we say we are using two webs, this is two webs put together at the same place just look at that it looks so annoying in fact i don't like to see it but this is two webs with the down one slide down it looks like you're using one webs it's going to be flat even when i'm using sewing machine to make my wigs when i want to use machine to double my webs this is what i do it's so it's so so nice it's gonna look so nice so now we're going to, um, let me remove the, the tape and now we're going to have to pin down and try to sew so we can get um, to see how our webs are looking. Now, this is our hair. Should we cut this hair? I actually brought this hair out for the purpose of the class. So beautiful. It's a very nice eight inches. It, it was a hair I got for sample from a company. As you can see, it was a sample they were all 12 pieces like this. I finished using them with a beautiful, beautiful hair. No shedding of any such. Like, it's so beautiful. Okay, so let's go, guys. Let me not bore you with the... <laughs> I love good hair. Piana, I love you for sharing me out. Thank you so much. Thank you. So, now, I'm going to have to place my webs starting from the beginning here. And I will, I'm, I'll just pin that, pin that down. So I take my pin. Pin my both webs. And pin it down. Now, our webs has been pinned down. Then I'm taking the boat. Even when while I was pinning it, watch how I pinned it. I pin it to make sure that the 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 down one is more down than the up one. That's how I pinned it. As you can see. So I'm going to go around now and fix them to be somewhere. So let's do that. So I removed it because I want to pin it where you can see it more. So like this. Okay, so this baby girl is all pinned up. As you can see. From here to here. So. Let's assume we want to sew this now. I'm going to show you guys four different methods of sewing. Four different methods. Four. 
different way you can actually sew your wigs. I don't know what's wrong with my standing today. It broke yesterday. So I might have to buy another one. You see, it's moving down on its own. It won't stay. I think I have to find a solution to that. It's keep moving up and down and down and down. It won't stay. So let's find a solution to the standing quickly, guys. Oh, oh my poor standing. I'm so sorry. It, 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 got, it broke yesterday when I was walking. I was walking on the wig. I think I did it too hard and the poor standing got broken. So sorry. This standing has been like my baby. Do you know where you have that favorite at feet? I have another uh, chair standing, but I kept on using this one. Okay, so it's not looking perfect, but it's looking man manageable. So today, basically, I'm going to show you guys all the sewing techniques you can use. So first of all, I use a curved needle for my sewing. Use a curved needle. So I'm just going to put my curved needle in. But before then, if this is your first time of sewing a wig and you've never made a wig before, don't worry. I'm going to show you from the beginning on how to make a full wig. But first, we are learning the basics of wig. We came from the measurement, extending to the type of the caps to use. Now we've extended the class to how to the, the right places to place your stitch how to space the spacing of your wig and now we are in the way you can sew your wig you know the type of stitches you should use for a wig so you need to hold your needle in the middle or hold your needle how you are more comfortable sometimes when i watch youtube videos i see people teaching people the right way to twist a closure i feel like the right way to hold a tweezer to twist a closure is the way you feel more comfortable that's what I feel. So I'm just going to start sewing. So I put my needle in. I don't think you guys can see it that way. So let me bring it very close. So I put my needle in. This is the first one I do. This one is called the traditional double knotting. The traditional double knotting. I don't know where they call what they call it elsewhere, but from where I land, it's called the traditional double sewing. So you want to put your needle into the loop two times and pull still with your hand inside the loop to avoid any type of tangling. And you want to pull in so close and tie. Your loop will be so secure that. You won't believe now the other most important part is that the other question that people ask me is how do i know the next place to actually insert my needle now it's not about the spacing of your needle so this is where we come to our tape again so let's take our tape the first stitching we did, let's put it at one inch. Oh, uh, my tape is upside down. Let me see how I can place that to make it not upside down. It's really difficult because it's supposed to come from here. Okay, all the same, we're still going to use this. God bless you so much, Viana. I saw that you shared me out. It means a lot to me. So. If I said I should use the tape like this, it's going to look like I'm flipping it upside down, as you can see. So we're just going to use it from here, and I'm going to pin it at five. So this tape right here is pinned at five, which is where the first stitching that I did is. Which is where the first stitching that I did on the wig is. Now we're going to pull our tape on, and we're going to pin it down again. Okay, so I'm trying to get um, a needle. And 
we're going to pin down again okay guys now we have we have our pin all set now this is the first place i put my needle and now this is my needle and i'm thinking where i should put my needle next so some people would say one inches and from here to here is one inches so let's some people would say this but that I'm not one of those one people. So let's teach this one inches and I'm going to tell you why I'm not one of them. Okay. Now we we'll stitch one inches. Some people will say, oh, one, chi one inches is enough. It's good. It's okay. But now let's take a look at this wig. Do you think one inches could secure this hair? This is one inches with my comb in so let's assume this is a with one brush trying to brush a wig that you made one inches do you think this would survive the test of one month no that's the answer so now let's go for half an inch so from here to here is half an inch and from here to here that's this is an half an inch of an inch from one number to one number is one inches. No, it's one inch, sorry to say. One number to the other is one inch. And in between those numbers, the longer, the, the longer uh, one that is across those numbers is half an inch. Half an inch. So we are going half an inch. This is the numbers, the line in between the numbers. You see so we're going the lines in between the numbers this was not a monk so let's stand it this way so the right place to sew which is regularly like normal which is normal in as much as you can do the not less i'm going to tell you about that too the not less stitching so the right place to sew is at least half an inch thank you so much viana the right place to sew is at least half an inch. This is extremely important in wig making. Half an inch. It doesn't mean that you cannot even sew quarter of an inch or even the, the, the tiniest quarter quarter of an inch or half a quarter of an inch. It doesn't mean. But professionally, this is the right way to sew your inches. It's supposed to be half an inch. In as much as you can, as you can go ahead and sew quarter of an inch i do that sometimes depend on the type of cap i'm using depend on the wig i'm sewing you know i do that sometimes you can also play around with your wig but don't don't sew one inches don't play around with one inches because your wig is going to start pulling off just after two days so you want to sew half an inch and you want to go in now so let's sew half an inch to see if we're going to notice any difference in our sewing Guys, pardon my sewing because I'm staying at the at the front and I don't know if that's the like I told you my manicure is in a state of emergency <laughs> so it keeps going down. I think I might be able to find another solution really fast. So don't worry if you can't see it. I'm just sewing in between those inches, half an inch that I told you about. okay now this is the sewing from half an inch let's give it a close close look there are different types of sewing which i'm still going to show you along the line but these are all the sewings that we made in half an inch as you can see let me relate them let me make them siblings So right now at my extent of making wig, I do not use marks anymore, but I already know where my half an inch is. So these are all the sewings that we have made. 
and now I've connected all of my sewing to the no, to, to the to, to the marking. All of my sewing to the marking. All of my sewing to the marking. All of my sewing to the marking. As you can see, so this sewing is half an inch, and this is the most perfect sewing you can sew your wig. I'm going to give you three reasons why, which is the why this is the best type of sewing you need to sew your wig. One reason number one, it will not make your cap to fold. There are different types of sewing, like I told you, which I'm going to show you another sewing. This is another sewing that people use. Please mind you, I am not condemning anyone's work. I'm just teaching you how I do my, you know. Mathematics, for example, is a subject that everyone teach different ways. Everyone has uh, their own way of teaching mathematics, you know. It doesn't mean, uh, if, you're, if, you're, if you're doing mathematics and you solve it this way, if you arrive at the same answer you are supposed to arrive, that's good, you know. It's still you solving the mathematics. Please, guys, help me to welcome the person who just came in. I saw Josie sitting in the house. Okay, so. So, the most important thing is that if you are making a wig and you are using the one inch sewing, I can prove it to you that you are doing it really wrong. This is not the right thing to do. Yes, you're correct, guys. I, I told you guys that people pay for my class. I have a class coming up uh, from the ending of October. And I already have, I'm going to show my registry in one of my class. I have 42 registered students already, mostly from the UK. So this is a very important thing I'm giving out here. People don't even know the meaning. <laughs> Some people don't even know the meaning. So this is a very important. Please, guys, help me to welcome the person who just came in, please. This is a very important, 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 important part. So some people, when they sew their wig, like I said, if you are still a wig maker that claims to be a professional and you are still sewing one inches, you need to go back to school, sweetie. You need to go back to a wig class and ask your teacher what they did. Because one inches, I gave you guys all, all of the example. This is the example. This is one inches being sold here. And this is my pen going into one inches. So let's just imagine that this is, um, let's imagine that this is a wig cap that you made for a client. Hey, Tracy, Twale, Twale, I, I welcome you. No verse, man. No, no verse. I beg, no verse. This class is the class I'm preparing for the future. By the time I got monetized for YouTube, and I'm going to have 50k view on this class. I'm telling you people. You guys don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm laying down foundations for my, for my building. No worry. No worry. No worry. So I put my pen in here. You can see how the pen is going in. So just imagine that this is... What is this? This is not acceptable in wig making. This is not acceptable. You see? But let's go through these ones. As you can see, you're going to have to pull hard and it's going to be intact. You understand what I'm saying? You see what I'm saying? So you need to make sure that your sewing are half inches. So now I'm going to sew, show you another type of sewing that people do. Let me show you another type of sewing. So people do what we call the interlocking sewing. Interlocking. Repeat after me, interlocking. <laughs> Class, repeat after me, interlocking. Oh yeah, so this is what we call the interlocking sewing. <laughs> so, thank you, Tracy. Ah, more mia, grazie mille. Oggi io sto qua. C'è tu che sta parlando italiano ieri. Ma adesso io voglio parlare in inglese. <laughs> I don't know what to say to Tracy. We'll talk later. <laughs> so they're all laughing. So Tracy is my Italian sister. We are Nigerian Italians. Okay, guys. So now to the half an inch, the, the, the other interlocking. The interlocking sewing is the one you do not create knots. So you go in with your needle as close as possible and you just sew in without creating knots. And I'm going to tell you why this is not advisable and why I do not do it. One thing about my classes is that when I tell you not to do something, I tell you the reason. If you've been watching my video, you would know that I'm very good at that. I tell you why not to do something and I tell you why you should not do it. 
So this is what we call interlocking. A lot of wig makers use this method where they basically just go on stitching their wig without creating knots. Yes, you're going to come out with a good wig, neat, and all of that. But let me tell you what you're going to come out with more. What you're going to come out with more is holes, a lot of holes in between your webs. Another thing you're going to come out with. <laughs> if you think you're doing that, you've been running away, you've been, you've been doing it and it's been favoring you. One more thing you're going to come out with is going to be holes. So if you make a wig for someone like me, I'm going to notice that you are not a professional. You are just making wigs. So you're going to, sorry for the rumbling outside. It's raining. Oh my God. It's raining outside and my family is outside. <laughs> So, one thing that's going to happen is that you're going to have lots and lots of holes everywhere. Here, here, here. A lot of holes inside your webs. And it's not going to look good. It doesn't look good. Please, if you have any question, you can ask me. I'm going to answer you. It's not going to look good. So, that's why you want to go and sew the other inches that I tell you. So, another sewing that people do is this one. People do a sewing where they come with their needle from the top and they pull it and they put it here inside like this oh my god it's raining outside this is another method of sewing that people do so some people do this sewing you see the sewing I'm talking about? Where they put the needle inside their, the head and they put it like this. And they pull it in. This is another sewing that people do. Let me tell you what this sewing will do to you. Yes, people do this and they, and they go free with it, you know. It's okay. But what it's going to do to you, it's going to make the web of your wig have hunchback. Do you know what they call hunchback? Most especially if you're creating... If you're creating like, uh, most especially if you're creating something like bob. Sorry, I have chalk all over my face because I was working with chalk earlier. Uh, if you're creating a style like bob. <laughs> Sorry, my YouTube not go so I don't detect something. <laughs> okay, Viana said, it's like you are just condemning all my work. Okay, Viana, if this has been your work, please, sis. It hasn't been a good work and you have to stop it, okay? You have to change it. So, what it's going to do to you is, I want you to notice this wig. From here to here, these are my sewing and these are how I sew my wig. And from here to here, this is how I see a lot of people sew. And this is so wrong. So now, I met someone. Let me give you guys a little bit short story. I met someone. I always used to say, I'm a professional, but I make mistakes too. Or my way, of a, my way of saying I'm a professional to someone else, I'm just a baby hairstylist. These things happen. We know book past each other, just as we know work past each other. It's a normal thing. We, we are more advanced than each other in, in, every, um, in every little way. We are all ad more advanced to each other. You understand? So sometimes, like what I'm teaching you now, you might go to another class. They have a different way of teaching it. The most important thing is that come out with a good wig, but let the wig be sewn the right way if you come out with a good wig why your thread is your loop is looking like this do you think this is a good work yes it's going to be tight when you finish sewing it but after a few days try to put your finger in between those sewing you make you will see how trashy is looking you understand so now what this type of sewing will do to you is that it will not make your wig don't forget wigs don't make wigs for people <laughs> just for me okay viana i promise <laughs> i'm going to make for you so you understand as you can see look at this wig now from here to here it's so decent it's looking so good everyone is not will notice it's looking so good but with the sewing i was sewing earlier the one i sewed here is trash so if you're still doing that vian if anyone is still doing that please just try to change it okay so i already told you you need to sew one inches out of the wig you need to make sure your wig sewing is one inches half an inch sorry nothing like one inches or anything less you can sew quarter inches if you have time but don't forget i told you quarter of an inch is going to shrink your wigs so let's move to the next class the next uh so, is this subject 
<laughs> the next subject. So the next subject is going to be is the same subject, but it's just going to be like me um me saying what I said earlier in the class because we're just going to be here for one hour and it's already 56 minutes so we have like uh, six minutes more to go so back to what i said from beginning of the class i explained the names of the measurements that we need that you need to know like the measurement i measured last week today again i went ahead to measure the names and show you the places that has those names so the first one i said was the circumference i said that the last time in the class circumference which is the rand around the head your head the measurement you take around your head like this is the circumference of your wig and then i said the front front to the nap of your wig the front of your wig is here the front of your wig is here and the nap of your wig is just before your neck so the front of your wig to the nap of your wig my usually measure 14 and then you want to check the ear to ear of your wig, which is from the front of your hairline to your ear. And the next one you want to check is the ear to ear of your front head, which is on top of your head to your ear. Here, back of your ear. That's the front of front. Then you want to check your temple. Your temple is here. Your ogo. We in Nigeria, we call it ogo. Your ogo is your temple. The place where you have your ogo. I don't know what Cameroon call it. Uh, Vivian, if you, if you know what you Cameroon call it, you can help me. This place is what we call ogo. In Nigeria, this place of the hand, that's what they call the temple. And this is the neck of your wig, and this is the nap. Here is the nap of your wig. Here is the neck of your wig. Here is the temple of your wig. Here and to here is the ear to ear of the top. The front is the uh, is the is the front. What do you call it? Front to nap is here to here. You understand? So these are very important steps. And now I've showed you. The right way to rule your wig. This is very important. How to know how to space out your wig. The right place to the right way to space out your wig. I did that ruling before. Let me connect them. Oh, I'm sure my family is gonna come inside now. It's super raining. Because they had to like step out a little. Even if they're there room there anywhere, you will see here then they shout. So I'm just connecting the lines that I did. So this is how your lines should be. I did one inches you can actually do half an inches if you're using more bundles if you have more hair you can do half an inches and it is very good to double your webs but when you are going up you can start sewing single webs so guys here is the end of our class today i hope you were able to pick up something i hope you learned something and uh see you guys next week sunday and look forward to all of my videos all of my videos that i'll be posting i'll be posting a video on tuesday on how i did this super super long uh braids for myself for six hours yeah it took me six hours to make this braid in the night five and five and a half hours it was not up to six hours this braid is actually long up to my new <laughs> what am i doing i want to show you guys i'm climbing on a chair <laughs> i'm climbing on a chair to show you guys <laughs> how long my braids are so they are super super long up to my news <laughs> mama africa oh lelo egoli <laughs> africa lele lele mama africa oh lolo <laughs> who has think can be not today so guys this is my hair what do you guys think about my hair <laughs> so just to show you guys how super long <laughs> this hair are <laughs> hello sister <Oga. laughs> i look like i look like the south african women there <laughs> <laughs> I look at those women from South Africa. Sister Go, what do you think about my hair tie? What do you think about my hair tie? Do you like it? I look like those women from Zimbabwe, Abby. Mm -hmm. uh, so, this hair took me five hours and a half. So, guys, I have to go now. I have to go. It's, it's no, raining no. outside. Eh? 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 Yeah, yeah. I have to go. It's beautiful. Which is beautiful. <laughs> I'm the one that tied like that. It's braids. 
Okay, guys, so thank you so much. Uh, my name is, I still remember your girl, Christana, and I am a wig maker. Bye bye, and see you in my next class. Please do not forget to check out my videos. Vienna, what do you think about the braids? I want you to comment on the braid before I go. You can use this hair to pack any style. I'm going to make a video on how to style it, but not now. Eight hours only. Yes, I actually showed the time I started and when I finished. I showed it. Yeah, yeah. Eight hours. I did it in the night. Six hours. You know, up to six hours. Five hours plus. My, um, I started around two because I had to let all my family sleep in the night. And by six, five something, I was true. To six, I was true. And then it's not much. Maybe it's because it's not much. It's just uh, 40 pieces. But it's a lot for some people. I know this will take about eight hours or more for some people. And I was braiding it for myself. And it was night. I, if you watch the video, you will laugh. I was dancing and playing music and just having fun. The braids are very long. Yes, they are long up to my nail. And the down of the braid all have different colors. I just wanted something for the summer. Taking it out maybe in two weeks time and then I change it to something else. I'm not, and it's not heavy. It's so, so super light. See, look at all the braids. They are super light. It's not even heavy because me, I don't have time to carry heavy hair. You can see, and don't forget my hair is natural. I have super thick hair. You're going to see it in the video. I have super, super thick hair. My hair is so thick. So for me to blend this braid with my hair, Okay, please do try it and please oh please tie you and tag me. You know I like that type of thing. Try it out and tag me. I can't wait. Mm, please do it and tag tag me. And you can actually open the path anywhere. You can open it here. You can open it here. For the summer, this is really good. And for Vian, you that you're complaining of edges, this is the best style to do for you. Because if you make this kind of style, you can actually cover it up and your edges or anything won't be showing. And you can use some color at the bottom just to spice it up or you can use just one color to spice it up the picture i don't know the thumbnails i'm going to take for this hair <laughs> do you guys know the thumbnails i should take for this hair this one here i'm looking like an hijab hijabnis this is what i use hijab <laughs> What do you guys do? You think I, sh I should take my thumbnails like this? Okay, guys, thank you so much for watching and have a nice day and bye bye.